We are so close to a holly jolly December. This is Corey, and this is the O the Anthem podcast. I was going to say, you remember when <laughs> we used to call these O the Anthem after dark? <laughs> this is after after dark. <laughs> Just Good afternoon. look oh. at us. Good evening, everybody. It's Rob. Welcome to episode 399 of the O the Anthem podcast, uh, coming to you from all over LA. But of course, Corey is there at the O the Anthem studios, gentrifying LA. One neighborhood at a time. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you for listening on your podcast of choice. The easiest way, anchor.fm forward slash over the anthem. Absolutely right. So um, we have a bit of a mixed bag today. And by mixed, I mean two halves of a bag. The first is really good news. The second is really bad news. What do you want to go to first, Corey? I say let's start with the good news. Let's let's start with You're the happy You're a glass half there. full kind of guy. <laughs> yes. I try okay, my best. So. <laughs> uh Good news. It's Thanksgiving, or it was Thanksgiving this past week. Yes. Um, it was a very nice Thanksgiving. The only thing that uh, that was unfortunate about it is that you couldn't join us for uh, the occasion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. By no fault yeah. of your own, obviously. But uh, Well, I mean, to be fair, it was my choice to not uh, join the celebration. Yeah. Also, my choice not to infect uh, or possibly infect everybody with COVID and that's a responsibility I take uh, very seriously, unlike some people in this world. Yeah, I I, I, I feel real bad about uh, about your whole situation there, but... Uh, really sucks. Especially bad for... I don't know what other people at your office did, like, you know, if they had plans to go home, if they still went home, or... Like... Well, here's the best part. Yeah. Literally, no one else changed their plans. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, uh, we get to be the next source uh, like, quote unquote, source, like in news stories where they're like thousands dead because this place decided they wanted to um, not follow COVID protocols and they wanted to, um, you know, then just let people go out to all four corners of the planet. Yeah. But I stayed at home. I stayed in my apartment. I left exactly four times. All four times were for COVID tests before returning back to my apartment. And I've been here since Wednesday night. And it's not that big. And I'm thinking maybe of adding padded walls in my house. <laughs> but in more good news, I got a bidet today. So things are turning up. You know what I mean? Like we're get, trying to class up the joint a little bit. We got, uh, you know. It's getting fancy, fancy in there. Like yeah. I, it really, really is. <laughs> Apologies, uh, but, by the way, of anybody who might be hearing clipping on Rob's end. That's just a. Uh, is it clipping so, again? Yeah. Well, it's different this time. It's just when you get when you get loud, it's sort of like maxing out. Oh, you know, so. maxing out. Know? <laughs> yeah, I didn't uh, didn't plan on getting angry. <laughs> Might have know. to turn your levels down just a smidge. That is just me. I'm looking for the yellows. I'm only getting greens. It's fine. Uh, but you had a much happier addition to your home over the past week. Yes. Uh, not a baby. Not another baby. Just so everybody's clear. Just not look, the same we baby. We had the conversation about Irish twins. Corey <laughs> is not interested, despite the fact that he's Irish, in having Irish twins. Yeah. Uh, my family uh, is out here right now in Los Angeles. Uh, we were just part of the reason why we're getting the late record time is because uh, my family has decided to come join me. I've been frozen in this position for quite some Oh, there we go. I, I don't know what is going on right now. <laughs> um, oh, there you go. My uh my family decided to uh come and see the new child and uh spend a little time here in Los Angeles. Uh, I, I, well, there was a like a star in the west and then they <laughs> followed it until it settled over a house gentrifying the neighborhood of um I'm up to my whatever. near I'm up to my ears in uh frankincense, frankincense and myrrh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what myrrh is by the way? It's like a it, it's another type of uh, uh, precious uh, precious metal, right? No, no, no. Uh, so gold is the metal. Yeah. Frankincense is it's like a, a gift spice, that, right? Yeah, it's a gift you would give a bride to take to her new home. Okay. And myrrh is what they would uh, put inside dead bodies to preserve them. No, oh, well, perfect baby gift. Yeah, I was gonna say I uh, I apologize. Your myrrh will be coming sometime shortly. Uh, but is it, for the Christ child, it was to memorialize the fact that you know he was uh, precious like gold, and he would be the bride, or I guess we would be the bride, giving. I, I don't know how that was supposed to work, but then the, you know the death and the life, so yeah. the myrrh. You know, it's all very symbolic and absolutely true, and in fact <laughs> will be rep repeated once again for the 
2021st? No. Yes, 21st. 2021st time this coming December. If you believe that the Middle Ages actually happened and weren't away for two kings, the Holy Roman Emperor and the King of Italy, to be the... Have you, you probably have never heard this conspiracy theory. Um, there's I, a conspiracy theory that says that two kings said, we want to be royal, we want to be king when the millennium comes, because, uh, that, or not the millennium, the, the thousand AD comes, because that will be the year Jesus returns. So they essentially erased 200 years from um, history, and there was no dark ages. It just never happened. We skipped over a bunch of years, mm. made it 1,000. Um, it's probably it not true. It makes you wonder... Uh, like who the next like uh you know the uh, everyone can have their own conversations about the divinity of uh Jesus Christ and all but uh you know when you die and the calendar changes that's mm-hmm. a that's a that's a thing like i i'm wondering i'm wondering who gets uh who who in uh in the world's history will be goodly enough to have that <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the like one. The day you died is the day we started a new counter on years. You know, we just went back and counted down up until that point. <laughs> it wasn't just a year. We started counting down. So I have been formulating because I have nothing but time. You know, because I'm stuck in the apartment. Um, I have been formulating our next time schedule, Corey. Just so you're aware. Okay. And I think I figured out the perfect thing to is do. Is this part of your scam? I mean, church. <laughs> Um, it's not, but it could be actually, that's interesting. And I should try to incorporate it in some way, but, uh, it goes off, uh, the theory of circuits, circuits meaning part, uh, part of your circadian rhythm Mm -hmm. and it changes the day to be 21 hours long. It then groups everything together in eight day circuit weeks and then six week circuit months. And it breaks down. So the year divides just as evenly. Only time will not be real. And it's not really real now. I mean, we've just gone through two years where it's not real. Um, But it's even less real. The reason to go to this cycle, by the way, it's not just me being crazy. It's because a 21-hour day actually works on every habitable place in our solar system. So Titan, Io, Ganymede, uh, theoretically Mercury, but probably not. It works there, even though we couldn't go there. Venus, Mars, all of them would be able to break down into seven hour or seven hour circuits of 21 hours and then six week periods. Then the only difference is how long your year is. And either we would establish a solar year, which was like 12 circuits. So, or, so no. I don't like this plan and let me tell you why. Uh, it's really going to cut into the 16 hours of napping that you get. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean like uh, number one, uh, the complaints of there's not enough hours in the day would be very, very consistent for this one. Yeah. Um, By the way, uh, you, you would go to work on the same circuit. You would rest on the same circuit and then you would have free time on the same circuit. So imagine that today you had uh, work during the day and tomorrow it's going to be slightly earlier in the day. And then the next day it's the middle of the night, like 3 a.m. And just keeps going pushing back. Here's, so. a, here's why this doesn't work for me, because currently under the 24 hour auspices, uh, we still have sunrise relatively at the same time every day, mm-hmm. minus the uh, uh, when we jump an hour, or fall back an hour. Sure. Um, so for the farmers, you know, farmers. so yeah, for the farmers. So like you know, tomorrow at six thirty, call it the sun is going to rise, right? If we're doing this new twenty-one hour thing, then the next day it would be rising at nine, and then the day yeah. after that it would be rising at noon. <laughs> then it would no, be no, rising- no, going the other way. It would be uh, 6 a, 6.30 a.m., 3.30 a, a.m., 12.30 a.m., because you lose three hours every single day. Uh, true, true, true. So, I mean, like, that, that I, I don't like this plan because it, it doesn't become oh, – con- time no. doesn't feel consistent to me anymore just based off of the way the sun goes, you know? You were right. I'm so conceited. I was like, <laughs> the sun will move itself to be during my day. <laughs> it's not. It would just seem to be later in the day the sun would rise. And eventually it would be, you know, uh, 10 p.m., in the circuit and it would uh the sun would be rising so it'd throw everything off but here's the thing and this is something that you spoiled ass fucking white people like you and me don't understand for most of the world especially the shift working world none of the things that we use as indicators even matter it's what time do i need to go to job number three and what time do i get off job number two and how much sleep do i have in between 
So under that system, maybe Corey, you remember this time where you were uh, managing a restaurant and you worked, you know, like 75, 90 hours a week. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, uh, time has no meaning. I, I get off when I can get off and then I go home and I sleep. And if I don't decide to go to a Michelle branch concert, that's in another state and then come back and oversleep by five hours, I will be up and at it tomorrow morning at the same time. Mm. So in that mindset, what if I told you, you only work seven hours a day and you have a minimum basic income that makes sure that you have enough to, to live and we take care of everything. You work one job. And as long as you're working the one job, you get all the benefits. I mean, I, th I think, you know, having the sun rise at relatively the same time every day would be more important to me than. And what happens when they ship you off to a slave farm on Titan where you have to mine <laughs> methane? Well, I mean, it can be much worse than Earth right now. So <laughs> I mean, fair enough. Uh, they'd have no, weird uh, diseases on Titan that we wouldn't even know about. But no, the day would mean nothing to you. Though I'll say uh, this week being the exception because my family is in town and uh, it's very nice <laughs> to see them. Uh, the cover. <laughs> I, uh, we were watching the uh, South Park special, uh, which you definitely need to find some time to watch. Uh, all weekend long, I was telling myself, like, all right, I don't want to fall asleep in the middle of it, and my sleep schedule was so fucked. And I was just like, all right, so I'm not going to watch it now. I'll, I'll wait and make sure I'm awake, and then I'd forget. And yeah. then right before bed, I'd be like, ah, oh, South Park. But I don't want to watch it now because I don't want to fall asleep during it. <laughs> And I just never watched it. <laughs> there's this one. There's this one part that, like, particularly uh, the the hardest I laughed was when they were talking about uh, uh, we had an incompetent president, and then the race war, and then just when things started to look like they were getting back together, Space Jam Two came out, and we all just sort of gave up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, it's pretty true. It's pretty true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but pretty soon, Rob is not going to be. Uh, caring whether or not it's light outside or dark outside because all of his time will be spent with his brand new uh video game system do you want to that's right i already <laughs> forgot the joy i just experienced by being like oh that's right. <laughs> oh yay so um for all you plebes out there who aren't me <laughs> i i just want to say up front i hate pay to play however the best ten dollars i have ever spent was getting Walmart Plus, which let me jump from 470th in the line to 10th. <laughs> so, nice. $10 well spent. And I just have to be asking myself, like, who is 350? And they're like, nah, fuck them. I'm not giving them $10. No. <laughs> I'd rather pay double. Oh, uh, so buried the lead. I got a PS5 today. Yeah. Uh, I didn't actually get it today. Uh, I ordered it today. It will be here in a couple of weeks. But the only way you could jump the line was to sign up for Walmart Plus with Walmart. And come to find out, it's $10, and they have a monthly option. Like, I didn't have to pay the full year up front. I just paid the month. So my month will run long enough for them to deliver my PS5, and then I will cancel Walmart <laughs> Plus. But I was just imagining somebody who's 350th in line, and they're like, no, $10? Absolutely not. Not I'm not doing the pay to play. Because I almost was you. And then I was like, yeah, fuck this. <laughs> you know, you know what I think is probably funny about that, too, is the guy who's like 350 in line. He's just like, all right, you know what? They probably have 350 PlayStations here. And then all it of is a sudden, an online <laughs> sale. It wasn't then, in stores. So. And then all of a sudden he sees his number turned to 351. And it's like people are jumping the line. <laughs> <laughs> so... I, uh, Even worse, they had 349. So he wouldn't have got it the first time, <laughs> but he definitely did get it when I jumped the line. Yeah. Um, Poor guy. Is there any other perks to Walmart Walmart Plus, or is there like, is it so, just like get, jumping the line on? Jumping the line is the big one. Uh, they do delivery, uh, okay. which is free. Unfortunately, I don't live close enough to any Walmart. I am one of. 10,000 people who live in Hollywood who are not close enough to a Walmart to get delivery. So <laughs> I can't take advantage of that part. I could order a part, uh, groceries to your apartment, but I'm not going to do that. So uh, other than that, there is, um, oh, you know, when uh, we had to go pick up something from Walmart during the pandemic, we, yeah. I was with you and we went and sat in that, like had to sit in a line or whatever. You also get to jump that line. So when you pull up and you say, I'm here, you will be the next order out the door. <laughs> into the car. So I don't hate that, especially because it looks like we might be headed back there. But before, I mean, before we get to that, it feels like, it feels like, uh, the more and more we, uh, we, 
we go through this like that. I, I I feel like Disney predates like all great ideas here because like this this reminds me a lot of like the Fast Pass in Disney where it's just like yep you pay two hundred dollars to get in the the park plus you could pay an extra fifty dollars to cut in line like five different rides and it's not like you're ever cut like right to the front but you're like. You know, it's in a line of 20 ticket, people right? instead of a yeah. line of 200 people. So, like... And literally, there have been... I remember one occasion when I was there. I think it was when I was there on spring break. And it did the Fast Pass. And I remember the dude in the Tommy Bahama shirt at the end of the line and being like, now, fuck this. I'm going to burn one of these Fast Passes <laughs> on this ride. So, I did that. And when I got on the ride, Tommy Bahama shirt was standing in next in line. And I was thinking to myself, like, this could not have worked out any better. I figured out that I would have waited in that line with him and it didn't really change my position. It only changed the fact that I didn't have to stand physically in the line. <laughs> you basically problem, just queue up to the Your line. problem was the Tommy Bahama shirt. <laughs> to be fair, there might've been 10,000 people there in that exact Tommy Bahama shirt and I don't remember the guy's face. I just remember the shirt being <laughs> ugly as sin. And I remember saying to myself, if I ever wear a shirt like that, I hope someone puts me out of my misery. But I'd only wear a shirt like that once I became a father because fathers are terrible just all around. Speaking of which, how's the baby, Corey? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, I, I will say that uh, both both her and mother would like to get to sleep, so we're trying to keep this one tight tonight. Yes, so. yes. Uh, uh, well, and I was going to say, so the, the before we move on to COVID, the only other news, which is a mixed bag, um, is... Yet another millennial, uh, elder millennial, uh, rich guy who makes poor decisions when posting on social media. Now he has made the good choice of stepping down from that platform. Uh, not the platform itself. Like he's no longer going to run the platform that is so problematic. Yeah. Uh, so Jack Dorsey, who uh, up until today was the CEO of Twitter, yes. um, also was the CEO of Square before that. Uh, has had a pretty interesting life in tech, uh, is stepping down as the head of Twitter. Uh, somebody new is coming in. I have not committed his name to memory yet, and I don't want to... The CTO. Yeah, CTO I don't, I don't, <laughs> don't want to bastardize his pronunciation by doing it incorrectly. Uh, but needless to say, uh, me and you spend a good amount of our time on Twitter. Mm -hmm. It is a... Vast and desolate hellscape filled with it is. literally every single opinion known to man. <laughs> um, it is the it is the type of place that if you spend too long there, it will it'll burn out the part of your brain that's like able to like understand how normal people think because yeah. you only get like hot take artists all the time. And you start thinking about stuff as if everyone knows, and then you realize like, oh no, <laughs> the little echo cha echo chamber that I have knows a lot about this and no one outside of us has any idea this is going on i mean to me the worst part of twitter is just like uh uh let's say everyone's arguing about baked beans right sure. there's there will the only opinions you see on twitter are baked beans are the greatest thing i've ever had i will do anything i can to have as many baked beans as possible or baked beans are the worst thing that's ever been invented and they're basically nazis now, this, and there's no, human there's beings, no though. like, yeah, there's no like, uh, hey, baked beans in the right circumstance, baked beans at a cookout, I really like, but normally on a day to day, I'm not a baked beans guy. It's only the the polar, <laughs> polar ends of the discussion. I, I disagree with you on that because it is very much polar ends and much like humans, where if I'm just like blah about it, I don't care enough to argue, and yeah. everybody wants to get into an argument, but you will occasionally get the. Hey, I mean, at a cookout, they're fine, but who makes them every night for dinner? And that person will immediately be shouted down by both of the <laughs> yeah. polls about how, how could you ever eat them? Yeah. And also, why wouldn't you eat them at every meal? They're the greatest thing ever. And it's protein. It's made of protein. <laughs> and then it's the meanwhile, amazing. the other people are just like, do you know where those fucking baked beans come from? <laughs> it's Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> they're ruining the environment with Jeffrey Epstein beans. We might as well just Jeffrey call Jeffrey Epstein and... Bill Cosby together invented baked beans in the late eighties. <laughs> no, but uh, I yeah, will say this: uh, so I that's Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this though about Jack Dorsey. Um, he has he hasn't batted a thousand. That's that's for sure. Right. Um, but I'm almost wondering at this point if 
the head of a social media company can ever bat a thousand. And the fact that I think that people who are really into Twitter, like really know what it's about, know who Jack Dorsey is, but like the day to day person doesn't know who Jack Dorsey is. But if you said who oh. runs Facebook, they're like Mark Zuckerberg. I hate that fucker. Yeah. Like there's no like Mark Zuckerberg has like a, you know, two approval rating. Whereas like Jack Dorsey might be like, you know, somewhere in the fifties maybe. Uh mostly because people don't know who he is. And kind of that's a victory. <laughs> like to to even be so like uh not infuriating can be <laughs> can be like a victory in this small way. Um, but I think there are three type of uh, internet millionaires. So number one is Bill Gates. Mm -hmm. uh, the first type, not that he was first, but the first type, Bill Gates, where they make their money doing something else and then they try to create some sort of social app and fail miserably. That's, that's one type. The other type, uh, I guess this is social media, not internet people. It's just social media failures. Bill Gates is one. Um, the second kind is Mark Zuckerberg, who all they've ever done is a social media platform and they've been very successful. They've tried to do other things. Those things have failed miserably because you can call it meta. If you want, it's fucking Facebook and Oculus. That's all it is. And yeah. the only thing they revolutionize is when they buy a company that's doing something else. And then yeah. now they're part of Facebook. The third kind is Jack Dorsey. Jack Dorsey made his money. I, do you said square? Is it, was it square? Yeah. That he was in I think it was, beginning? I think it started with square. Uh, Elon Musk made his money on PayPal and then, Jack Dorsey migrated from Square to uh, Twitter. And he's been, he was relatively successful with Square. Not the best, not the worst. Relatively successful with Twitter. Not the best, not the worst. I hope this is a lesson for other people who have made their money in entrepreneurial fashions, like the aforementioned Elon Musk. And I think Elon should look at this and say, hmm, Jack made a bunch of money, then started another company, made a bunch of money, and then he's going away. Yeah. And Elon... This message is for you. I want you to go away. I just would like to not hear from you and not see you anymore. Just go. It'd be fine. We'll be fine. Well, I think that's been enough good news for one day. <laughs> was that good news? Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, oh, that what's was, the bad news? That was kind of sitting on the line, I guess. Um, what's the bad news if that was the good news? Good well, Lord. well, the bad news. Uh, um, we're in the age of Omicron, which sounds like a new Transformers movie that I don't want to I was going to say, wait, Transformers has it? <laughs> Michael Bay, you've done it again. <laughs> you remember when you amazing <laughs> You remember when uh when Delta first became the thing and like everyone was making fun of like Delta Airlines because it was just like <laughs> COVID Delta. And oh, uh, why do we do this? Coronavirus, all of a sudden everybody hates Corona. Yeah. Delta variant, now everybody hates Delta. Come on, guys. <laughs> I just love I'd love to see the CEO of Omicron somewhere being like, oh, come on, come the fuck on. <laughs> you just gotta be uh, hoping for Mew. You're like, let <laughs> the next big one's gonna be Mew. They're gonna skip right over us. It'll be fine. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck. Well, uh, okay. By the way, I also thought Omicron was a Marvel uh evil doer, super villain. <laughs> like uh there's Ultron, like but Thanos. I really thought there was Omicron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently not, though. Apparently that's not a thing. Well, the, the always the worst part of uh, when a new COVID variant comes out is uh, doing the, uh, how bad is this one going to be? You know? <laughs> like, uh, I, I think that uh, Delta was so far the only variant that has sort of broken through in a way that, like, people sort of fear Delta when they didn't fear COVID. Uh, well, and to be fair, there have been worse ones. Mu was pretty terrible lambda terrible but they kind of put the kibosh on it where it was first discovered and it didn't spread delta just went crazy it was very transmissible turns out omicron is as well very transmissible so that's uh well that's i mean th w what i was saying there is like we're still sort of in the early days of omicron so it's hard to tell exactly how much more transmissible it is if it is able to evade uh, vaccines like there's a lot of theory right now but there's not a lot of sort of hard fact at the moment which is kind of to me at least the most terrifying time of any kind of variant where you're just uh, like i i have a hope uh, omicron is greek letter o and i keep seeing the o and thinking zero as in the number of people who were survived this excellent <laughs> at least we finally know now this is going to be it all uh, you dumbasses killed us all thank you 
I'm surprised they didn't just go with Omega. Mm. Omega is essentially Z. So yeah. they're working their way through the alphabet. Mm. Lambda, Mu, Nu, Omicron. <laughs> well, with enough, with enough uh, gusto, we'll get there soon enough. Listen, um, there ain't nothing that's going to stop these conservatives from getting us to Omega. Because as we know, God is the Alpha and the Omega. So <laughs> we're going to get there. And then he's going to kill all of us, hopefully. <laughs> Um, but the, the real shame of, uh, uh, Omicron now is that it's going to, uh, panic a lot of people, uh, and, uh, you think I'm helping or hurting that and uh... not, and not panic anybody, <laughs> like the people who weren't panicked before are going to continue not to be panicked, but, uh, yep. uh, I, I guess I'll be dead soon. <laughs> I, I, I really, uh, I just got my booster, uh, a week ago, I guess it was. About uh, a week ago. And uh, I'm happy I did that now in the age of Omicron. But uh, at the same time, like, I, I just. You wonder what, like. Uh, there's almost a part of me that sort of feels like Omicron and like the the ghost story nature of it right now, because like literally. Anybody who's telling you with 100% certainty that they know anything about this is lying to you. Like, yes. it's all theoretical at the moment. The CDC um, doesn't agree with each other. There are two yeah. guys at the CDC. One says, not very transmissible. It's going to be fine. The other one says, very transmissible. And there is a chance this could be highly contagious and deadly like, yeah. beyond the vaccines. And I'm like, you both work for the same <laughs> thing. Can we get our ducks in a row? I just... I, 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 there's a part of me that wonders if it's just like new variant. Let's tell ghost stories. Like let's, let's try and make this sound as bad as humanly possible to scare people into the vaccine. Maybe. I don't know. Like I, I really wish, uh, I just really wish we could just, <laughs> we could just get together a little bit and try and get past this together. But, uh, clearly, uh, that's not going to happen. There's no, I got good news for you. Very yeah. good news. It's only two weeks to flatten the curve. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh. <laughs> May twenty twenty was a crazy <laughs> time. Oh god. Uh, anyway, uh, so flatten part the of curve. the <laughs> <laughs> part of the uh, interesting nature of this is that it kind of came on suddenly. Um, and two things: one, a lot of people are blaming South Africa. Like we now have a travel ban to South Africa, but. South Africa isn't where this started. This is where some of the best virologists in the world are doing spectrum analysis and sequencing as many samples as they possibly can. Mm -hmm. So it means they find more things like beta or beta variant, which turned into Delta. Uh, that was also South Africa. And now oh, Omicron, Omicron, all found in South Africa. They're trying very hard to sequence. That's why we should not blame them because they're good at science. Because the U.S., who should be leading this, has a bunch of dunderheads <laughs> running it, as well as citizenry. And everybody, just everybody. Everybody. I, I just, I, uh, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I mean, like, honestly, it's just, it's, it's, uh, like, the, the other one that, that really amazes me is that if you look at where, cases of COVID are happening. It's the United States by a lot. And uh, yeah. Yeah. We countries, far and above. countries with millions and hundreds of millions more people, billions of people yes. are below us in the terms of total number of cases. Please, like, you know, you would think India got hit really hard during the summer. Yep really yep. hard like right before the vaccines really started being able to make their way to to india things were getting it was just havoc over there they also and, have four times as many people as us by the way four times right. and also i think even a lay person who just sort of sees like what the living conditions of some people in india are would say that's not a good like that's not, environment. that's not a clean environment for a pandemic to to like simmer out and die in. Like no. you got people stacked on top of each other. You have, you know, bad, <laughs> bad uh, infrastructure for wastewater and stuff like that. Uh, you know, you would you would think that this would be 
uh, you would see an explosion of cases just based off of the fact that there's so many people and there's so many uh, factors that would allow a virus to uh, spread exponentially. It did did spread exponentially. It did, but not more than it did in America. (laughs) At no time (laughs) during this pandemic has India, with four times the amount of people, had more cases than the United States. And this is not a per capita number. This is in real terms of cases, never surpassed us. Brazil, terrible outbreak, never surpassed us. China, where this is from, not really, but whatever. China, never surpassed us, despite I, also having four times as many people. I would say, the one thing I would I would say though is that I, I've never really entirely trusted that the numbers out of China are one hundred percent accurate. Um, nor have I really. To be honest with you, trusted that the numbers out of like Brazil are one hundred percent accurate, or the uh, numbers out of you know the United States. Well, I don't I mean, trust those are accurate. I, I think the I think the biggest problem in the U.S. right now is that like people will not get tested unless they feel like they're sick. Like you, you don't know, like, say, Corey. <laughs> I ask from my quarant- self imposed quarantine <laughs> due to exposure. I mean, like you know, I I have to get tested every so often for work. Uh. You know, but it's not like I I say, oh, it's Tuesday, time to take another COVID test and just see where I'm at. Oh, like, you know who does that? You know who does that, Corey? <laughs> the other guy on this podcast? No. M- yes, me. <laughs> I do that. And yet, I am at the will of children who don't understand how their actions impact other people. But anyway, I'm not bitter about it. Yeah. Uh, and as far as traveling goes, guys... I think uh, I'm. You know, we don't know what's going on exactly with the with the variants. We'll see. We'll find. We'll find out what happens. Um, but I, I will. From my from my completely non scientific position. So please don't take this as a as a a okay for anybody out there. But I do feel like uh, if you're traveling, and you're not getting vaccinated you're not testing yourself regularly you're not taking some sort of precaution you are being very uh frivolous with other people's health you know like it's it's uh we're at the point now uh, like i'm i'm almost uh i'm almost at the point now where i'm 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 ready to call you can't get on an airplane until you've had the covid vaccine you know what if it doesn't help you if you don't what if the vaccine doesn't actually stop anything and also it doesn't protect unvaccinated people around you like, you know, a newborn. Well, yeah, but I'm saying like, uh, well, I mean, at least in that case, I will, I will say this. Something that has made me uh, a little bit more uh, feel a little bit better about this whole situation we found ourselves in is that Rachel has gotten two shots during the time where uh, baby Casey was inside. So he was aware that she was there one time. <laughs> we uh we know that uh, uh, uh there's been there's been a lot of science that shows that uh babies who have been uh cooked in a vaccinated mother are uh pretty uh are showing good antibody response. So I will Yes. I would and hope she that out. she she's not one of those super covid babies that's like 45 <laughs> pounds. So. Yeah. Thank God for that. Be moving right out of uh, six to nine months and directly, <laughs> directly into, like, you know, kids' gap. <laughs> what comes after twelve months in kids in baby sizes? One. Just a one. Oh, I don't know. I, mean, I haven't gotten to that point yet. It's the uh, first of all. There is some twelve to twenty-four month stuff, but really, you go from twelve months to one T, two T, mm. three T, four T, five T. And then some brands have sixty; other ones just start sizes at that point. So that you're probably so it's a ways like off five to She's a small. child small kind of thing. Yes, yeah, generally yeah. speaking, it's where you have to be less specific because they're all the kids are just androgynously shaped. So. <laughs> but uh, travel restrictions. I myself had a trip planned for the spring, which I've now postponed because who knows? Who knows where we're going to be? Um, and also, uh, there is some reports of people who were out traveling now and cannot get back. So yeah. I don't want to be one of those people. I also don't want to fly to the UK and then have them be like, great, two weeks of quarantine. Like, well, so the, my, my trip is 22 days. Uh, 
uh, that really kind of puts a kibosh on it. Okay, great. Well, when you go to France, it's uh, two and a half weeks. So get ready. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I think the, the main reason why I wouldn't want to travel then at that point is just like, you spent how much money are you going to spend on a hotel for two weeks? And in, unless you like have a friend you're staying with. Oh, here's and the fun even part. then I don't like is somebody there are there's a, a maybe one hands worth of people like five people in my life uh, outside of the family who is visiting me and, uh, you know, for their own sake and ours getting a hotel. Um, yeah. uh, I think there's like maybe five people in my life who I would say, come stay in my house for two weeks. <laughs> you yeah. know, like, it's just a little bit. Now, granted, well, if somebody said, hey, I'm going to be in town for one night, or I'm going to be in town for, like, two nights or three nights sure. or something like that, sure. that list grows exponentially bigger of friends I would have who I would who I would gladly welcome. But the, but the is, two week what about limit. Two day, what about two days, and you have to be with each other the entire two days? It's like, one night means you got shit to do, and then you'll come crash, and we'll hang out, and then you go... Two week quarantine means it's you looking at me for two weeks. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Well, I'm here. That's the problem. <laughs> like I'm yeah. here. You have to stay here. Like yeah. we're gonna run into each other over the course of. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good news is everywhere except America, all well, all Western democracies other than America, um, you don't pay once you're quarantined. The government pays for your uh, where you stay. Oh, nice. Because it's their rule. They're enforcing it. You're stuck. So you they pay for it. Um, outside any prepaid stuff you have. So if I was planning to go to the UK for five days, or I think it's four days before we move on, they would let my would pay for the first four days. And then they would say, okay, so now you have to stay here for another 10 days, but we're going to, we'll pay the cost. Now you have to pay for food. You have to pay for whatever, but the hotel is on us. So hypothetically, if I flew to England right now, with just one night booked at a hotel, yeah, they'll cover thirteen more. So I don't think uh, England is doing the quarantine. But if you went if to I, like Austria or Bulgaria, yes. I mean, so I could get like you know the most exclusive five star hotel. Oh no! Book no, my no, one night. You. They'll move you. <laughs> oh, okay, they'll put me. You put don't me get in the, the presidential gulags. suite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get here. the uh, the room down in the basement next to the ice machine. <laughs> No, no, no. You pay for that. (laughs) Yeah. We'll keep you here if you have to pay for it. Uh, We will offset it by, let's see, your room costs $4,000 a night. We will offset it by $20 that we would get. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I'm not traveling. There are people who are stuck. Not a good idea to travel. Don't. If you really Uh, don't, if you you don't have to, I, I, I would really, you know, caution against it. I mean, like, yeah, I'm a... Right now, I'm not. I'm not even thinking of getting on a flight until Casey has had all her baseline vaccinations, just like the one she needs. Yeah. You know, from two months on. You know, like the two month mark is where she gets all the vaccinations that like make it safer for her to go out in mixed company, kind of thing. You know, Whooping cough, MMR, mm-hmm. all the big ones. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, like, I'm not even thinking about it until January, but. Right now, in my mind, I would like to be able to go home in January and see uh, the people who haven't yet been able to see the baby. But at the same time, I'm like, <laughs> it's all hypothetical at this moment, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. Well, and I would say it, the best would, course even of if, action. Even if I was capable of flying home for like Christmas or something like that, I think I would avoid that even if I could because I don't want to deal with all the people who will be traveling with my <laughs> also yes along with oh yeah. you would have a baby in the midst of all of that i just feel like it would be it would be way easier to book a flight and k- keep away from people in january as opposed to christmas you know like as someone with a january birthday i can tell you that is true on <laughs> on the 10th the 9th it's dead uh you walk onto the flight it's great uh but i would say the the best course of action for everyone is to act as if your husband slash lover slash whoever he is was involved in some sort of worldwide sex trafficking ring, including an island where children were sex trafficked too. And by that, I mean, stay in one small place and await the trial that'll probably lead to your death um, <clears throat> through suicide or other means. But uh, that is what one person in the world is doing, of course, uh, Ghislaine. Ghislaine? 
Ghislaine. Yeah. It's, I, Ghislaine? I, Ghislaine Maxwell. Everybody. I've never I, felt I, like I've pronounced Epstein's it correctly. So No, not once. Not one time. But uh, Jeffrey Epstein's wife or girlfriend or whoever is now going on trial and she is in solitary confinement in Manhattan under suicide watch. That sounds familiar. Why? Why does that sound familiar, Corey? <laughs> well, because her, uh, her, uh, her other half. I won't go with the Whatever with the better is, yeah. half for sure. Uh, her other half uh, uh, mysteriously did not <laughs> did not survive the suicide watch. <laughs> funny, uh, when he was, funny thing. Um, mm. now she let, made it to trial. She made it to trial. Trial started today. Yeah. Um, the most ambitious judge in the world who said, "No, no, no." I keep this clock. I keep this courtroom running like a clock. We got four hours for jury selection, opening statements, evidence starts tomorrow. And at the end of the allotted time for jury selection, they had one juror, one possible juror. So that didn't work out. Yeah. As he played, unfortunately. Uh, mostly because people said they could not be unbiased about the case. When it comes to sex trafficking children, Everyone seems to have an opinion, yeah. which is weird. Weird that that would be the case. Uh, judge didn't anticipate that, I guess. But um, I was hoping, uh, based on the initial schedule, I'm like, oh, we'd be able to hear opening arguments and discuss that. But um, turns out not. Yeah. not. Uh, I actually stopped following when at the lunch break they said, we have one possible juror. I'm like, oh, this is going to be a long time. Um, it's going to be a lot like the uh, Arbery case from Georgia, which took two weeks for jury selection. Yeah. I mean, but not, not as long to find a jury. Going, going back to Maxwell here though. um, I mean, (laughs) I think, I think she's going to have a real tough go of trying to um, convince anybody of her innocence. And well, so she's I, not arguing innocence. Yeah. She's arguing that she too was a victim, and under his brainwashing slash control, she did do the things that have been alleged. But she was not the one who incited them, and she was only following orders. I guess. I guess my wrong. number one question at this point, which will depend a lot on what type of trial we see, is: Are the lawyers at this moment in a federal trial like this uh, already giving up their witness list or their possible witnesses? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. They so that's already that sort of been been yep. discussed with the court. Because I mean, like, I I really think uh, <laughs> that, that will be that will tell a lot of the tale of where they choose to go with this. Because but the federal judge has not released them. He has the purview of whether to make them public or not. And apparently they've been submitted, but they haven't been made public. So we don't gotcha. know. But we will see as we go along. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of high end names of people who could show up talking about. Yep. Uh, what uh jeffrey epstein knew and you know if any of them were called to testify in open court uh i think that could make for a very interesting trial and uh, yeah i imagine that that's why the judge looked at the list and was like oh no 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 no. we're gonna sit on this uh gag order on this immediately no more copies should be i see the number one name on the list is former president bill clinton (laughs) let's see Let's oh wait, wait, wait! Number guy. two on the list: <laughs> former president Donald Trump. Yeah. Uh, this, number three, a prince of England. No, we're not. We're not going to make this public. Uh, we will uh, refer to them as witness one, witness two, witness three, uh, and not mention anything else. So that that'll be fine. We'll put put them behind the wall, and the, they'll answer all their testimony through the Vox box. Or... No, you have the right to uh, to. Uh, <laughs> See your accusers. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean they have to be made public, but it's real hard to get Bill Clinton in a courthouse <laughs> in New York without everybody knowing. So. <laughs> Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I <laughs> do. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it. Uh, I think um, that it's probably good for Ghislaine Maxwell that she hasn't made the witness list public, because we all know as soon as Bill's name pops on a list like that, Hillary will have to take action. <laughs> I, you know, I, uh, I'm not, I'm not saying that people aren't allowed to have their conspiracy theories. And you know what? Honestly, some of the people with their, with their, uh, like Clinton crime syndicate things are like, uh, I feel like it, at, at some level, like just good clean fun. 
Uh, like it's people yeah, who are sure. just trying to have some fun. Um, the people who really think that like the Clintons are out like assassinating people, like it's House of Cards, I think yeah. are <laughs> are a little bit off base. Um, By the way, some people think <laughs> she is doing the murdering herself, and I'm like, first of all. She doesn't grocery shop for herself. You think she's going to do a murder by herself? Motherfucker, no. Courtney Love couldn't even pull the trigger herself. What makes <laughs> you think that Hillary Clinton's doing it? Well, Hillary Clinton has no soul, so it's easier <laughs> for her. She also doesn't give her hands dirty, though, so it's it's a mixed bag. Who knows? I mean, I, um, I, I just think that, you know, like, it, there's a there's a level of ridiculousness, though, that, like, you know, the Clintons have, like, fucking 15 bodies on them or something like that like it's just... it's almost to the rob deer deck for a level of ridiculousness <laughs> we need to get what's her face on there laughing like an idiot you know west coast yeah. let's get... i used to be able to do her laugh. it's like a dolphin it's like <laughs> it's like fran drescher and a dolphin that's what it is it's like fran drescher and uh peter griffin fucked yes <laughs> And the offspring was half dolphin for reasons. <laughs> for reasons. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned, there was another important trial. Yeah. Uh, the Arbery trial wrapped up in, um, in Georgia. And it took them two weeks to find a jury. And it took the jury two days to find all the defendants guilty of something. Not all guilty of the same crimes, but well, all of them were guilty of something. Well, I, I will say this. Uh, I think if uh, this if this case was happening at any time other than right before Thanksgiving, yeah. it might have taken a couple more days than, <laughs> than they you gave. Everyone's like, uh, 11 to 1. George, <laughs> the fuck, man? We talked about this. What, you I don't like turkey? Wait. You don't like turkey, George? <laughs> uh, I, listen, I hate your guts, but I'll invite you to my Thanksgiving just to give you something to do so we get the fuck out of this room. <laughs> um, the charges... Uh, or the uh, the eventual uh, verdict here found uh, all of them basically guilty of everything, uh, with oh. the exception of the two. Uh, only one only one man was uh, the. It's it, it was malice it, murder. Yeah, it was like malice murder as opposed to like, it's like depraved heart in some places, right? And like yes. yeah, premeditated in some jurisdictions. Yeah, malice, or first malice degree is- or. Yes, first degree. Yeah. It's uh, a first degree murder. Um, the the one who actually pulled the trigger, and I can't tell them apart. They're all white guys uh, of varying ages with weird. The one, the one Hizzling. who testified was the one who yes. got the uh, Malice. the first Malice degree murder. murder. Yeah. Um, then uh, his father got second degree murder, uh, third degree murder, and aggravated assault. Um, yeah. But he was found innocent on the kidnapping charge. Cause he didn't actually get out of the car and like box him in. He stayed in the car. So, or the truck. Yeah. Uh, and then the third guy didn't get malice murder. He didn't get second degree murder, but he got third degree murder as well as assault and kidnapping because he did get out of the truck. Uh, yeah. He said he got out to record initially, um, but he didn't stop it. Let's just say that. So, right. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people who are talking justice that there's yeah. justice served here. And uh, I think people have a different conception of what the word justice is. I, to me, justice is this type of thing doesn't happen anymore. Like, <laughs> like we yes. don't ever have another trial where anything like this ever comes close to happening because yeah. the people who would potentially do the crime know that they are just going to be dead to rights if that if this if they get caught and this goes to a jury and stuff like, or even a bench. Whether trial. you're a cop or not, like yeah. you got one cop convicted. That doesn't mean that the problem goes away. We got one set of people convicted. Yeah. Derek Chauvin wasn't justice. Derek Chauvin no. was an individual act of jud- <laughs> judicial good doing, I guess. Like, well, it was justice for George, but it wasn't justice as in equaling the the weighted balance between law and, and order. Not justice for the country. It was justice yes. for this incident. One incident. Yeah. And what we want to have is that happen every time. Then we have a justice system. Yeah. I mean, we we talked about the uh, we talked about it when it happened. It it's it's uh, you know, this whole incident was beyond the pale. The incident with the whole incident with George Floyd was beyond the pale. Yeah. Uh, and it it was, if you couldn't see the problem with what they, <laughs> what the, uh, eventual, uh, 
uh, guilty parties in both those cases did, then you were missing the forest for the trees. You know, like you 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 just didn't understand. Uh, now, the <laughs> other problem is we should not miss the trees for the forest because Kyle Rittenhouse is the other side where, yes, legal experts were saying this was the expected outcome because Wisconsin has the law that they do and the rules that they do. That doesn't mean it's right. It just means that the law was followed. The problem here is the law, not the fact that uh, any incident happened. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the uh, I like Stephen Colbert's take on it, where he's like, uh, yes, just because uh, just because he was found innocent based off of how the law was written doesn't mean he was that... found not guilty. By the way, not well, innocent. yeah, not guilty. Innocent means you didn't do the thing you're accused of. Not right. guilty means we have no legal holding. Excuse, excuse me for my misspeak. Uh, yes. But the, you know, just because he was found not guilty uh, doesn't mean that, like, justice was served here. Justice was done right. It should be more of a case that why is this allowed? The law should change, not the. Yes. <laughs> not the and I, I do think that uh, we will find uh, the law changing in some ways based off of this because I don't think. It, you know, it, it's it's be careful what you wish for, because like we talked about it with the the Texas abortion case, uh, they opened up the door for vigilante enforcement of laws. And that could yep. extend to right leaning issues like gun control or something like that. And I don't think they I, I think, you know, the Mississippi case will be it will be the real uh, the, the real moment at the OK Corral for abortion in this country. Yeah. I think the Texas ruling will eventually be overturned just because they don't well, want to they don't want to leave this the Mississippi decision. Yeah. They will come out with a decision and it'll say here are the new limits and Texas inevitably will be too far for that. So it'll be them by proxy be be found to be um unconstitutional. In violation, yeah. But Texas will then immediately change their law to match the maximum possible under the Mississippi decision and that'll be it. Yeah. Um but again, it's a dangerous precedent because um, I imagine states like Mississippi and Texas will be changing their stand the ground their stand your ground law because they have something that's modeled after Georgia, and they will look at that and say, no, 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 these guys should have been innocent. They were making a citizen's arrest and stand your ground. They get allowed to stand your ground. So now you don't even have to announce that you're making a citizen's arrest because that was one of the flaws. You have to tell the guy, I'm holding you until the police come. Otherwise, it looks like kidnapping. Um, so I mean, those laws will change. I mean, all I'm saying is, uh, like, right now, across the country, California in particular, there's been a rash of these, like, high-end thefts that are going on where Ooh. 80 people <laughs> 80 people all get out and start, like, ransacking different high-end stores and stuff like that. Um, this is... You know, this is a, a, a opening on the Kyle Rittenhouse case is the opening for all of a sudden a well organized group to go and do a similar thing in <laughs> in vigilanteism, basically. Not You're, in California, though. Not allowed in California. Thank you, Bla Black Panthers. Yeah. Kind of in reverse because they made laws to stop the Black Panthers. And then uh, now those laws are being used against gun owners. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, one one. Uh, quick thing before we get off trials, I just wanted to to put this in people's minds. Uh, we're not at the point just yet where we will have a uh, verdict in the Elizabeth Holmes trial. That's probably still right. a week away, but we will get into that one when it reaches its conclusion. Uh, there have been a lot of great podcasts that have been sort of, sort of following the blow by blow, and I don't want to uh, disrespect what's been going on in this case by giving... Uh, like just like thousand foot view uh, topic I mean, or thoughts. But as you, uh, as you can tell, we do opening of trial and then discuss what happened. <laughs> in the trial. Yeah, that's it. But uh, we will definitely get into that one as well. That's another we've been we've been uh, we've had a lot of high high end uh, legal cases going on this this fall and winter. So good. Yeah, good. Uh, uh, but also I have I have no uh, qualms about the fucking stores. Um, yeah, I, I had the thought today. You remember RoboCop? And mm -hmm. like this dystopian future where crime was run rampant and they always made it seem like, oh, well, this is because law and order broke down. That's why we need RoboCop. Right. I think what we're seeing is it's not because law and order breaks down. It's because 
people are so poor and desperate that they just don't care anymore. And they realize if you overwhelm the system, most of us get away and we're fine. If not all of us get away and we're fine. Uh, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm not condoning uh, <laughs> large end oh, robberies and yes, stuff like that. Would. All I'm saying is that uh, a lot of these people, I think, uh, didn't think this one through as much. <laughs> because, like, so for instance, one of the videos I saw, dozen people invading an Apple store. Yeah. And people shoving iPhones into the <laughs> into the bag and then running out. All I'm saying is they got GPS on them fuckers. Well, They're going to find where that phone went to. And then it's number like two. stealing gift cards from a supermarket. <laughs> They're not activated yet, idiot. You can't do anything number, with them. Number two. Oh, they can. Oh, they can do something with it. Don't. <laughs> Don't you worry. Apple ain't that dumb. Number two, uh, uh, all it takes is for them to find one person. Oh, yeah. And then find the means by which they connected with the other people who were. Because, like, it's not like all of a sudden a dozen people decided to randomly choose to <laughs> overturn an Apple yeah. store. Like They met on the on the street right outside. <laughs> like, you want to rob this place? Like, yeah. Yes, let's do it. It, it, uh, it originated on the internet. There was a, there was a message board where this was being discussed. And, uh, and, uh, that's the, uh, the one thing you want to avoid in any case is the extra charge of the, uh, conspiracy, because that's right. usually where you're going to find yourself fucked. Because somebody's gonna talk. There's no. Oh, so yeah, yeah. We found no products on you. We have no proof you were there. However, you're part of this discussion. So welcome to conspiracy. Um, <laughs> but I didn't even go. I skipped that day. I was sick. Doesn't matter. You're part mm. of the conspiracy. Sorry, conspiracy holds 15 years in this state. Well, yep. what can I do? Uh, give the names and addresses of all the people you know who are involved. <laughs> who That's told you, you they were do. definitely? Who offered you a ride? Because they were definitely going. Uh. We have uh, just a few short minutes here. Uh, so Yeah, I, I skipped over everything else. None of it mattered. Let's just go straight to your uh, your weekly uh, uh, Sports section. ball rant. Just trying to get you to say the word so I can uh, <laughs> trigger it. Yeah. Um, so, first of all, Ravens played on Sunday Night Football. Uh, it was it an did. awful game. It was an game. amazing game. Oh, oh. <laughs> I didn't an, get to watch it because I was stuck in my apartment in quarantine. Yeah. Uh, it was an awful game. Uh, but I would also like to to say to other people who like, I listen to a lot of, you know, NFL podcasts and people who like break down the game and they're talking about like, oh, the, how shitty this game is. And I'm just like, okay, I'm, I'm not going to deny it. It was a pretty, it was a pretty sloppy game. Uh, but I also would like if uh, every once in a while when people discuss like how sloppy this team is when it's playing with a lot of like third and fourth string guys who are filling in yeah. for injury like yeah of course it's sloppy you don't have the the cream of the crop out there like also, but- we know the ravens play down to whatever team they are playing against yeah. they could almost beat the chiefs and then also almost beat the browns that's how that works or <laughs> yeah. barely beat the browns um so yeah i mean the ravens right now are uh, the number one seed in the AFC. So surprise, surprise. But uh, I, I I really think uh, it'll come down to, you know, it, it's all about the playoffs at this point. We got the we got yep. the Steelers next week. We got the Browns again the week after that. But, you know, th- this team will make the playoffs, it seems. Uh, I'm not saying they're going to win the division and be number one seed and everything like that, but they will make the playoffs and we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Like it's, it's a, it's a crapshoot. Everybody else there. looks, everybody else looks pretty terrible also. So that's good. That's I, all good news. I, I mean, like you, there's not one team in the AFC or the NFC where I'm just like, I don't think the Ravens could beat them on a random Sunday, you know, like yep. nobody is a juggernaut. Uh, and in the case Except of Tom like, Brady by himself in, in Tampa Bay. And in the case of the NFC, there's like four teams that are in the playoffs that I think are decent to good to better than most teams. Mm-hmm. And then there's seven total teams that make the playoffs in each conference. There's three teams that do not deserve to make the playoffs in the NFC. And but you look at the people in the Sunday. hunt. And you look at the Sunday. people in the hunt and they got like the fucking Panthers are still like hypothetically in the playoff race. And you're just like, no way. <laughs> not a Even chance. Even if they were statistically eliminated, they brought Cam back. <laughs> yeah. I would say they, they're statistically eliminated, but they're not out of it. Let me tell you. How. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, they're out of it. <laughs> Cam Newton is going to rip that shirt and you're going to see a real Superman <laughs> label underneath. And then Superman, that Superman shirt doing, ain't doing anything for you when you're five for 29 on Sunday. So <laughs> yeah, I was going to say his second week wasn't nearly as good as his first week. What are you going to do? His first week was only like five passes. <laughs> but compared to what they had the week before, it looked amazing. Uh, final thing. Um, we had talked a little bit about this way back when, when the Rams had moved uh, from St. Louis to Los Angeles. Uh, this week. Ooh, there's a wind to come in. That's what we said. There's a wind to come in. Just wait. This week, uh, there was a settlement between the city yeah. of St. Louis and the NFL. Uh, $14. In the case, dollars. <laughs> in the Parking case of, for 20 minutes. In the case of uh, the Rams being uh, moved out of town. And yes. you know what? It, this, uh, I, I think uh, this case is very interesting because it sets a lot of precedent for teams that move in the future. Uh, yeah. this one, this was about as dirty as it gets as far as a team, uh, taking advantage of a city. So yeah. just a couple quick points, uh, so people understand what I'm talking about here. Uh, they settled for 700 something million dollars, which is basically, we're going to give you this money right now because we know that if we go to court and we lose, we could be looking at billions in dollars in judgment in st louis county yeah, where we would go st louis where the trial would happen yeah um <laughs> and that is not something the nfl wanted to do especially once they realized that uh stan Kroenke, the owner of the rams who initiated this whole problem uh had said uh it was his understanding that when he agreed uh <laughs> he agreed to pay uh any legal expenses that came with the rams moving he only meant the legal cost of the lawyers who would fight the case, not the judgment that would come with it. And then all of a sudden, all these owners are looking at each other like, I got to go 132 on two billion dollars because Stan Kroenke said no. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you saying? So, man, what the fuck, man? <laughs> um, some important p- points of this. Number one, uh, it came with no uh, promise of an expansion team for St. Louis. I know a lot of football fans in st louis were looking for that it seems like the city of st louis is uh committed to being a cardinals and blues town and not being involved in the the, nfl anymore the baseball cardinals yes the baseball baseball cardinals Cardinals. hey missouri's got another team listen they had a football cardinals and then they decided to leave too so (laughs) um and then yes they did what what is so jarring or so galling about this whole thing which i which everyone should look at as uh as a a way to possibly get these kind of judgments in the future. Uh, Stan Kroenke, the owner of the St. Louis Rams at the time, uh, before St. Louis even had an opportunity to uh, propose a new stadium, uh, Stan Kroenke bought the land for the stadium that would eventually be SoFi Stadium in Inglewood. He's a businessman, Corey. (laughs) He could buy that land for a lot of reasons. You don't know that it was for a stadium. Yeah, except for it eventually became the home of the state. <laughs> like, uh, you know, and there apparently were emails that were were already part of Discovery that showed uh, owners basically saying that none of the rules were being followed as in terms of like yeah. how a how a team is supposed to position themselves to move. Uh, there was no negotiating in good faith with the people of St. Louis on getting a new stadium. Yeah. Uh, it was basically discussed openly that no matter what St. Louis proposed as a stadium, it wasn't going to be good enough. They were going to say that it wasn't good enough. Yep. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, uh, negotiating in bad faith is pretty much the open and shut discussion of what happened here with St. Louis and the Rams. And uh, I'm glad that the NFL is going to have to dig deep for that 700 something million dollars and pay St. Louis almost immediately because, uh, uh, they did wrong. They did. They did right. wrong. I mean, I mean, like to be fair, though, this doesn't need to set a precedent because New York has two teams. L.A. now has two teams um, for now. Uh, Florida yeah. has professional football for reasons that defy <laughs> imagination since they don't like professional sports in Florida. So no one's going to have to make this kind Not of only do they have time. teams, but they have three of them, which makes no sense. <laughs> they can't fill one NFL stadium if Tom Brady's not playing. There are, there is an, as many professional football teams as Flor- in Florida as there is in California. Yeah. Yeah. So, chew on that. that. <laughs> yeah. Like, 
Now, there used to be four, yes, but Oakland, not a football town either. St. Louis, no. you've learned. You've learned. <laughs> um, we're a basketball and hockey town. Uh, that's uh, Baseball and hockey. Do? Baseball and hockey. Yeah. Yes, baseball and hockey. Uh, I was going to say, Oakland is a basketball and baseball town. Except for not basketball anymore because uh, the Warriors oh. decided to play in San Francisco instead where all the... Oh, that's oh. right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sucks. Poor Oakland. I, I feel bad for Oakland. They're going to lose their baseball team, too. Yep. Uh, Wait, in like three or four years when that comes up. Not even. Probably. This might be the last year of baseball in Oakland. Uh, they're they're having a conversation about a new stadium in Jack Loudon Square. That is, uh, that is probably the last bastion of hope for the A's to stay in Oakland. And if that doesn't pass the city council, if that doesn't get voted by a ballot measure or whatever it has to has to go through, you're you're they, the A's are basically Vegas's team to lose at that point. Uh, but I'll, I'll mention, um, based on the people I follow in Oakland, it's not going to pass, and nobody cares. They're like the activists. They're like, why are we spending this money? And they're fucking right. Why would we spend billion a billion dollars on a stadium? Who needs baseball that much? I'll, I'll go to San Francisco if I want to see baseball. I mean, I understand where people come from with that with that conversation. I would say this. Uh, there is not a, a – a sports team raises the, the uh, prestige of a city in a way that almost nothing else does. A, a high-end art gallery doesn't bring people in from all over the world like a sports team would. You know, like the Jets make more, more, more money than the Guggenheim Museum, and the Jets fucking suck. So yeah, but like, by the way, you and I could go to the Guggenheim like three times a week if we wanted to. We could go to the Jets like once in a lifetime. So yeah, I mean, I, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying like you know, uh, if Oakland, <laughs> Oakland wants to be considered a a top flight city, you have to have sports teams. That, that's basically the that that's how people will recognize cities within a, a state. You know, like just keep you, in mind if when you the ask if you happen, ask people Oakland's a place to go <laughs> if you ask people. Uh, name as many cities as you possibly can in California. You're going to come up. The names that people will come up with are all the names of cities that have sports teams. Bakersfield, Sacramento, <laughs> yes, San Diego, all major. Well, towns. Sacramento and San Diego both have sports teams. Oh, fuck. No, Bakers- Wait, who's in San Diego? Uh, the Padres. I, I said sports teams. <laughs> Not sad, hapless losers who can't make it. <laughs> all we right, take well- our draft picks. Assholes, <laughs> overpay them. Well, not uh, overpay them, but pay them less. If you hey. want to, if you want to see more, uh, more baseless assault on the San Diego Padres, you know where you can go. Where's that? Oh, the anthem dot com. Cordial the anthem dot com with the anthem on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and the listener line four four three two one nine seven five nine five. What's that number again? Four four three two one nine seven five nine five. Uh, I would tell you you can find me at my website, but you still can't. <laughs> uh, I. Can can I, uh, uh, I uh, just real quick? I uh, I have nothing else to share, so I'm just gonna put this out in the universe. Uh, I have been desperately looking for a way in which I can get a website builder that will allow me to do a organizable chart, where you could have all of my credits, like all the things that I've worked on, in one big list, and then if you click the button, it would just show the features, or it would just show the shorts, or it would just show the music videos, or just show the whatever. Like just be able to like organize a chart on a page because that's all I really want out of this website. And I just want to say I, the time it, seems it took like, you to search, you could have learned JavaScript in that time and made it yourself. It seems, it seems like, it seems like an easy thing to ask, but apparently no, none of the major website builders uh, offer this type of thing. And uh, I, I could learn JavaScript, but also at the same time, uh, I need. I kind of just need a website where I can go on there and and futz with it, as opposed to have to figure out <laughs> to recode my website every time I want to make an adjustment. I'm trying to make this to, easier. You'll on know myself. how to recode it. You don't but, have to. You'll know the whole thing. Facebook.com forward slash Corey Baker Film at Legends to be five on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I got so frustrated. I went away from. <laughs> <laughs> you can find more of me at Robert and Cheek on all your social networks. RobertNCheek.com is available, coded by moi. Uh, you can find links to all the stuff I'm working on. Uh, and, of course, uh, the thing I do more than anything else uh, is stream Call of Duty on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash RobertNCheek. 
And of course, come play with me. Anku Kuryas, that's A-N-K-O-U-K-E-R-Y-S on Activision and Robert Enchik on PlayStation. We're only a couple weeks away from that PS5 action going oh. on there. Oh my God, it's going to be such an upgrade. <laughs> I forgot you just reminded me. Oh. <laughs> I'm so excited. Well, I think we've done good here today. You know, you know, I'm in a good mood now. <laughs> I'm going to say we've done something. I don't know if it's good. <laughs> It's a step up from where we usually are. It was done with Pep like, and Vigor. That was the change. It wasn't so much that anything constant-wise changed. Nothing changed. It's the attitude. Yes. <laughs> but as always, you're listening to the OD the podcast, part of the OD Anthem Digital Network. For Corey, this is Rob. Have a great week, everybody. So uh, are you thinking about doing uh, doing your doing the fancy clothes for the PS5 like Roberto wants you to do? Um. Like the specialized no. skins and the oh oh uh, the rap? like new no, plastic pieces care. and yeah I, I have two pieces of artwork hanging on my own walls I have literally no care for that um, <laughs> also unlike Roberto I'm an adult man so. <laughs> 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 <laughs>